This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha, welcome to Adventures in Small Business, a collaboration between the United States Small Business Administration, Hawaii District Office, and its resource partners, where we showcase Hawaii's entrepreneurs and small businesses. Uh, my name is Dennis Kwok. I'm the director of the Veterans Business Outreach Center of the Pacific. And today we have a husband and wife team of Sarah and Danny Cunningham. Welcome to the show. Thank you. It's great uh, to be here. Yeah, yeah, thanks for having us. You're right, right on. Uh, so Spicy Indian Chick, great name for a, a business. So. <laughs> Uh, before I actually talk about the business, can we talk a little bit about you guys personally? Um, maybe we'll start with you, Sarah. Okay. Talk about your background and uh, you know where you're from and how you uh, started this uh, small business. Okay, well, um, I'm the oldest of eight kids. Wow. Um, so uh, my sisters and I, we, just, we grew up cooking. Mm -hmm. You can't afford to eat out with eight kids, so <laughs> <laughs> you cook dinner every night. Um, my mom was a good cook. My dad immigrated from India as a small child. Oh wow! Okay. And my grandmother lives in India, um, half the year, half you know, half in the states. So we just grew up with her culinary influence. Mm -hmm. We cooked Indian food a lot, and I naturally just enjoy cooking. Um, we also have six children now. Wow! So again, we can't afford to eat out. <laughs> so, so that kind of runs in the family, uh, big families. Yeah. Okay. Danny, do you have, come from a big family? Yeah, well? I'm the oldest of twelve children. Wow. So. <laughs> so six is kind of a small family for you guys. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. It's a perfect amount. It's a perfect amount. Huh? Oh, that's wonderful. Um, so, Danny, you're in the um, military. Uh, what branch? Um, uh, officer in the army. Officer in the army. Yeah. Okay. And you plan to. Uh, take on this uh, venture with your uh, wife uh, when you uh, separate from military service? Yeah, so uh, we both kind of gone through all the planning and the drafting the ideas together and uh, even though she's the main contributor and operator, <laughs> we plan on maybe transitioning this summer and then uh, making it more of a joint venture together. Okay. So, I mean, uh, just talking about your background, saying mm -hmm. uh, you were saying that you're half Indian mm -hmm. and you had a big influence of cooking at home with your parents, um, with your mom and your grandmother who used to come here. Uh, was that the mo main motivation for you to start this business or was it just something that you always enjoyed and wanted to do? Well, we, we love good food. Yes, we all. <laughs> <laughs> we've all. I feel like we've always had high standards and we both worked in the restaurant oh. industry, you know, like through college and high school and for actually a long time, for probably close to 10 years. Oh, okay. So is this not your, uh, you haven't, you've worked in restaurants before, yes. so you've had yes. kind of skills. We've so. had, you know, some basic experience, some okay. basic background of how things work. Okay. But um, this is your first um, restaurant? Of, yes. Owning a restaurant. Like, okay. Or uh, first anything. Yeah. First anything. Okay. <laughs> Great. Um, so I think we just took things from that that we've learned. And then, you know, we, I like to cook and he likes to cook and we always like to host. We always host holidays and Thanksgivings and gatherings. You know, when being military, we've always moved around. And mm -hmm. somehow in that, we've always hosted everything. Oh, okay. And so cooking for a crowd is no big deal. And we've always had great feedback from things that we've, you know, done just with friends and family. So I don't know, this is maybe the next logical step. Yeah, okay. So uh, you've, you know, you tried it at home. People really liked it and you're trying to venture into making a, some kind of business. Yeah. Okay. Uh, which is a great uh, progression, by the way. Um, so you, let's talk back, going back to you saying you're being a military spouse. Mm -hmm. I mean, it must be very, very difficult to start a business uh, when you're you know, uh, going back and forth and moving <sighs> locations. So um, this is where you guys settled at, and buying a business right. or starting a business. You plan to stay here in Hawaii? That would be our hope. That would be your hope. Yes. Okay, wonderful. Um, and your business, Spicy Indian Chick, is located in Haleiwa? Yes. Okay. And what made you choose that location? Um, the ambiance, okay. the foot traffic. Right. And I kind of like the, it's a stationary truck, mm -hmm. so we don't, at least for now, this one doesn't drive around. Okay. So I kind of liked the idea of, maybe as a woman, you know, it's nice to be home and make your house, like, something that you want to be at. I like the idea of coming to work every day and making it something that was mine, you know, that I could create the ambiance and, you know, make it mm -hmm. something that people could come to. Like, this is the essence or something that we're giving off instead right. of just 
driving around, which I think is a, also a really neat thing, mm -hmm. but just personally for me, mm -hmm. I like the idea of just driving to work and this is my space, right. and, you know. Okay, so mobile food truck, not so mobile, but definitely staying <laughs> there for now, right? Yes, so okay. we, we have like a little patio area with seating okay. and nice. um, outdoor lighting for okay. the evening. Yeah, I still haven't got made a trip out there, but I definitely will. Yeah, um, you definitely what does, should. Yeah, I know. Uh, so what, is, uh, what does the menu look like for uh, Spicy Indian Chick? So currently right now we have, we do an Indian, like Indian food with a twist of fusion, I would say. So we are offering three vegan options and three meat options. Okay. Um, so we're trying to appeal to everybody up there okay. and I know there's a big vegan influence up there so and then we um, you there's like three steps to our menu right now so you pick your plate style and you can serve we do roti rolls which mm -hmm. is everything's um, so what Indian. are roti rolls for people that don't know so I mean roti, I do know but it's like an I'm Indian just... flatbread okay it's flatbread. like um India's version of a tortilla okay so tell me um, what is difference between a roti bread and naan are so naan is Yeast. yeast. So roti is unleavened. Oh, unleavened. Okay. Yes. So it's so uh, naan takes a little bit more work and it has to rise and you know all right. of that. And okay. roti is just flat, but we do it like we roll it burrito style. Okay. And add like the rice and or we do tacos mm -hmm. with it. Um, but one thing I wanted to say true to mm -hmm. was <clears throat> that everything was authentically Indian. Mm -hmm. That we weren't taking like Mexican tortillas. Right. And rolling up Indian food in right. it. Right. You know. So I wanted everything to be Indian. The presentation we could change it up and make it funky but just everything authentic so we offer that with the roti and then we offer traditional basmati rice which we season with like cloves and cardamom and cinnamon and then we offer some healthier options which are slaw which is a mixture of cabbage red cabbage red onion and carrots with a house dressing or a salad so we source um, local like pupakea greens oh, okay for all of our salads and then um, so we can package it differently mm -hmm. for you know how so whether you're on a keto diet a gluten-free diet you know okay. we can so it's uh, kind of, more health conscious than um, one would assume but I, I yes. always found uh, Indian food there's a lot of great vegetarian dishes you can't yes. say that a lot about other types of cuisines because vegetarian I mean me being a meat eater I eat vegetarian food one, only once in a while but uh, Indians kind of the one that I really right. do because I mean, it's got so much flavor all the sauces mm -hmm. like the curry sauces that we offer mm -hmm. Even if it doesn't look like there's vegetables in it, mm -hmm. I mean, people don't understand that we took a lot of vegetables and usually pulverized it mm -hmm. to make it a smooth sauce. Right. But there's a lot going on in those sauces. Behind the sauce, right? Yeah. Okay. That go, a lot of work goes in. So do you source uh, your own herbs and spices and uh, you make these sauces at home? Nothing's prepackaged. It's just all... Nothing's prepackaged. Okay. We don't use a packet for anything. We even go as far as to grind a lot of our own spices. Wow. So we have invested in a spice grinder. Okay. So we grind a lot of our own mm -hmm. to bring you like unique flavors. Right. Um, a lot of our marinades for the meats, we have pre-ground the spices. I'm thinking specifically the, our pulled pork vindaloo. I grind all those spices and the shrimp go in curry. I grind all those spices. Okay. So for a lot of the dishes, we're grinding and mixing different things like that. So, um, Danny, what do you do? It seems like she does all the work. I'm, I'm just joking, but I know that uh, you help out too. Um, and you know, just going back to the military experience, uh, how has your work in the military kind of prepared you to opening a restaurant? Is it a totally different thing that you're kind of uh, new to, or is it something that uh, you know you feel confident about um, having served in the military? Uh, there's certainly a lot of overlap. So, being an officer in the army, you have to be very familiar with the military decision-making process. Right. I took a lot of those processes and applied it to building the business plan. Um, and then being an artillery officer specifically, mm -hmm. I took some of my skills I learned in targeting uh, and applied that to marketing. So I was getting information on uh, the businesses, the population, mm -hmm. um, what are their likes and dislikes. So, sure. And then trying to find something that they didn't have. Because I think we had talked about a couple different ideas with food trucks. Uh, course leaning towards Indian <laughs> but uh, just the fact that there's a large uh, population that was health conscious mm -hmm. and uh, wanted vegetarian options mm -hmm. definitely swayed us like yeah this is right. definitely the correct way to go right uh, and then we just took uh, analysis of a what would be or could be competition up in Halieva and did a, a brief you know summary report on 
what that looks like and what that means when we open up. Like, what are our price points? Right. Uh, how far can we go to get like the freshest and greatest and most organic ingredients? Like, we can't afford to import stuff from India directly, maybe, right. but we do. <laughs> uh, and so there's a lot of um, background research mm -hmm. and then planning you have to do in it. So every time we get an idea or every time we're trying to implement something, we're there's a lot of thought process. Preparing sure. a bunch of uh, processes. So, what what's the price points? What's the time mm -hmm. consideration? And then what can we offer it out of? So we're always preparing. Then we're going to plan it out, and then we're going to execute it. And as we're executing it, we're always assessing. Right. Because eventually, you know, we might think we want to offer it this way, and realize this doesn't work. Mm -hmm and we have to make adjustments. And then that's also where we start focusing on the customer too, because they'll give us feedback. So something we thought was great might be only great at Danny yeah. and Sarah's table. <laughs> right. and we kind of have to change it for um, the, our customer base. Right. So. And talking about your customers, what does your customer base look like? And I know um, you've been open since um, just uh, maybe a few months now, right? Since um, November. November, yeah, okay, November. so wow, only a couple months. Yeah. I know it's uh, kind of new to you, and you guys are still trying to get your bearings right. But uh, for the past couple months, um, what does your customer base look like? I mean, is it tourists? Are they locals? Um, what are they looking for? Are they vegetarians? I mean, I know you I might. I feel like we've had a melting pot of all those things. Okay, sort of um, like Hawaii. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah for sure. We've had a lot of tourists. Okay. Um, which I thought were locals because they kept coming back. Oh, right. And then they're like, "Oh, we'll see you next year." Oh, and, wow, that's pretty cool. Um, so that was encouraging. Um, we've had a lot of locals. Mm -hmm as well. Mm -hmm. So I think it's been a good mix. A lot of vegans mm -hmm. or vegetarians um, who are very happy that we're serving mm -hmm. something from a truck that they can eat. Oh, wonderful. So, yeah. Yeah. It's great. Uh, so um, only two months open. I mean, what does the spicy Indian chick look like, you know, later on in the year? Do you have plans, I mean, to grow revenue or what is your uh, most important goal for this uh, first quarter, maybe the first half of the year? Uh, for the first quarter, we're looking at possibly expanding our truck to offer more menu items, but it'd be a very, very conservative expansion. Okay. Uh, just enough to add another station or two. Okay. Uh, and we've contacted some vendors about getting a tandoori oven oh. uh, shipped to the island. That way, we can maybe do naan. But again, that's planning stages. Sure, it's we still planning. We might not planning. get to the execution <laughs> yeah. okay. stage, but those are um, we're actively trying to see how can we improve on what we're doing or how can we add. Mm -hmm value to what we're doing and oh, that's wonderful those are some of the efforts we're taking right now okay and uh, do you I mean are you guys vegetarian yourselves uh, no we're not or not and I, you we were talking earlier and you said that you have a whole pork vindaloo yes okay so that's kind of an homage to Hawaii I guess so. yes <laughs> okay uh, yes. But it sells very well, and you love to eat. Um, we actually, he, we had initially, had, he had put it on the menu as just pork vindaloo, uh -huh. and it didn't sell very well. Oh. And I was like, man, this is so delicious. Why uh -huh. isn't it selling? And anyone who did eat it said that was amazing. But then when we changed it to pulled pork vindaloo, uh -huh. I, can't, I can't make it fast enough. Oh, now. wow. It's that's really funny. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> and we actually um, have two dishes that are kind of a homage to Hawaii. We have our uh, Hawaiian Indian Delight, which mm -hmm. is a classic uh, Indian vegetable medley, but we decided to add Okinawan sweet potatoes sure. and a little bit of um, uh, coconut sauce to help with the rice, keep it nice and moist. Oh, okay. And so that's our Hawaiian twist to one of our vegetarian di or vegan dishes, actually. And oh, so wonderful. we have that, and then the pulled pork, right. which pulled directly from uh, Hawaiian culinary sure. practices. So. Right. Um, okay, we're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back. Thanks. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. If you're not in control of how you see yourself, then who is? Live above the influence. When I was growing up, I was among the one in six American kids who struggle with hunger. But with the power of breakfast, the kids in your neighborhood can think big and be more. Go to hungeris.org to make breakfast happen for kids in your neighborhood. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, inviting you to come visit with us on Cannabis Chronicles, a 10,000-year odyssey where we explore 
and examine the plant that the muse has given us. And stay with us as we explore all of the facets of this planet on Wednesdays at noon. Please join us. Hello. Hi, welcome back to Adventures in Small Business. Uh, my name is Dennis, and we're here uh, again with the uh, husband and wife team of Danny and Sarah Cunningham from The Spicy Indian Chick. Um, just talking about the menu makes me kind of uh, salivate. Super hungry right now, and I wish you guys brought some food for me. But uh, let's uh, going back to kind of uh, when you started the restaurant, or when you, I, I mean, we I met with Danny a couple times, and mm -hmm. you, um, and uh, when we had conversations, it was sort of like, you know, you guys were thinking about it, and then you just took this step. And what what was that? What was that step like? I mean, you guys just had a conversation, saying, "Hey, let's just do it," uh, or was it more kind of a methodical approach to uh, purchasing or starting this business? Um. Danny is very methodical. Yes, I can see that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a, just tell me what I need to do when I need to do it right. kind of person. So it's something we had talked about and generated ideas. And then um, the location was available and the truck was for sale. And so we started moving forward with looking more into it mm -hmm. while also looking into other trucks and seeing like what our options were. I think we talked about that like yeah. in the beginning initial stages. Um, and then it just was like, okay, we're either going to do it or we're not going to do it. Right. And so... You just jumped. We just did it. Oh, okay. Um, so, you know, going back to what you were saying, that you have six children, both mm. of you. I mean, that's uh, bravo. I have two, and I can barely keep track. But uh, <laughs> six children, starting a new business, I mean, it must be very, very hectic for you. Or yeah. maybe it's just uh, something that you're used to. I don't know. I mean, what, what does your day look like uh, starting a business? Um, uh, my day? Yeah. Well, I usually leave my house around 10 o'clock in the morning. Oh, okay. And I homeschool the kids. Oh, wonderful. So, I don't know if that's so wonderful right <laughs> now. I mean, it's definitely posing some <laughs> challenges. Some challenges. <laughs> but, that, I mean, when we started that, that was something I said to him was, I don't want to sacrifice this that I'm doing with the kids, right. you know, for the business. Yeah, there's a picture so. of your kids, beautiful oh, children. Uh, kind of image is kind of blurry, but, uh, wow, five girls and a boy, huh? Yeah. Is the youngest one a boy? Yeah, he's okay. the youngest. So is this a, do you guys plan to have any more? No, no. No, that's it, yeah. No, no. <laughs> okay. um, do the kids help out with the business? Yes. Um, on days that, you know, they can only be, that we can swap them out and mm -hmm. they can only be there for, you know, a few hours. All right. Yeah, we try to teach them cool. the ropes. So uh, going back to your day, you start at 10 and then? At 10, I leave the house and then, you know, get to the truck and... So I have enough time in the morning, you know, to make my kids breakfast. Mm -hmm. If I wake up early enough, I can get laundry and, you know, okay. house stuff done. And I have someone coming with the kids now in the morning, and she can execute. I just leave a detailed list, and she executes a lot of the things with the kids for the day uh -huh. that I don't accomplish. Right. Um, we do some things. We do, like, art study and music study in the mornings, and usually I can knock out science and or history and then get them started on math and things like that. So my morning is super full before I leave for the truck. Right. And then <laughs> it, gets, it gets busier as the day and then goes. And it just gets busier. Um, so my days are pretty busy. I pretty much don't sit down for the whole t 10 to 12 hours that I'm there. Yeah. So anytime we don't have a customer, you know, I'm prepping or making chutney or getting another sauce ready or, right. you know, setting up for the weekend. Um, and then I'm usually getting home around 10, 1030 at night. Wow. And um, it's definitely been challenging with the kids. But I keep telling them it's just a season. Right. Um, and anything worth a darn in life takes a lot of hard work. That's a very, very so, good thing. Yeah, of course. I totally agree with that. Anything so, worthwhile takes yeah. time. And so I feel like we're paying our dues. Right. Okay. And it doesn't mean that this is the rest of our lives. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely miss my kids. Oh, and, spending time with them. Yeah. Because yeah, you spend less time and more at the business, right? Um, but I feel like we've done a pretty good job of okay. juggling them sure. uh, between the two of us. So would you say that's the biggest challenge that you're facing is, yes. I guess, time? Time for myself. For yourself? Yes. And what about you, Danny? Do you, I mean, I know that you are still <laughs> actively in, in the military, and, uh, but uh, do you have, what kind of challenges have you faced starting this business? Uh, yeah. If any. I'm, I'm, maybe you don't. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, there's different uh, challenges, both to uh, the business and to the family life. So, sure. uh, as Sarah already said, we have to kind of plan things pretty well out that way. Okay, I've got the kids, and you got the evening shift, or... Uh, you have the evening shift, I have the kids, right. whatever that swap is. Right. Uh, and then just trying to make sure that we have a lot of quality time with the kids. So we're not, you know, putting the business first. So that's one thing we've kind of tried to make sure. 
as uh, one of our principles is, you know, the family comes before the restaurant. So we might close down a day earlier for a holiday, right. and we might lose a lot of money doing that, but per sustaining the family life, that's far more important. It's a very nice, you know, it's a nice mission, I mean, like personal mission for you guys to do. And it's nice. I um, mean, that's partly why we, we are open Monday through Saturday. Okay. And we have decided, even though Sunday is a good day yeah. for business, we've decided just to close. Okay. That way he's home from mm -hmm. work. Right. You know, and it's just, we can go to church and right. just do whatever we want on Sunday. Oh, that's nice. Um, yeah. Like family time, real family time. Yeah. And I will say, my youngest brother, mm -hmm. um, his name's David, um, when we started this venture, I kind mm -hmm. of like whispered a little, little birdie in his ear. Mm -hmm. And he's young, he's 18. Oh, okay. And uh, he decided to come up, so he's kind of like my right-hand guy. Oh, is he still here? Yeah, he's oh. actually, he's at our truck right now. Oh, oh yeah, because you're off, you <laughs> yeah. guys are here. Oh, okay, so having family here has uh, definitely been uh, helpful. That's been super helpful. Okay. So uh, he's kind of, between the three of us, we're juggling right. um, a lot of hats, and okay. he's been really, really helpful. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, it's, uh, it's always challenging if you don't have family in Hawaii. <laughs> yeah. Raising kids, especially, I mean, I don't know what six kids look like, but uh, it must be uh, challenging. Um, so along the way, when you started this business, have you discussed this business or have you had assistance from any uh, banks or any lenders or, you know, any kind of mentors along the way? Uh, so no specific help from any financial institutions. Uh, I reached out to, you know, a small business uh, association, and mm -hmm. then I found the Veterans Business Outreach Center. Oh yeah, uh, with that's us. Yeah. You and, and Victoria, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and that's actually been one of the most helpful oh, good. Uh, sources on island. There's okay. other sources online, right. and articles and books that I've been, you know, yeah. consuming as quickly as possible. Right. Well, <laughs> I didn't pay him to say that, by the way. But uh, thanks for that. Uh, yeah, but shout something out. local yeah. and someone you can actually uh, reflect ideas, or um, if you have an issue with something, hey, I have this template but I have no idea how to fill it like having a person right. that's you know flesh and blood to actually talk to yep. that's gone through this with uh, other folks has been tremendously helpful okay even if some of the talk is kind of short and quick like, <laughs> right. I actually got something out of it oh, so. wonderful good um, so um, you know you're in an industry uh, food and beverage uh, it's got a very very high failure risk I mean um, it's failure uh, rate. Yeah, yeah the failure rate excuse me uh, so the risk is high and I knew, I know that you guys knew that before going in. I mean, how do you mitigate some of that risk, or how do you prepare yourself for that? Um, have you th thought about that, and how do you, you know, keep on edge where you have an advantage, or you're always uh, trying to be better and not fail? I guess it's a, it must be, you know, I know you guys, you don't want to talk about failure, you know, first year in business, but it's something that must have, uh, you know, run through your mind, I guess. Yeah, it's a very real possibility. Sure. It's something we had to address right in the beginning, even before we started, you know, looking for food trucks. Right. And uh, I think one of the things we kind of realized, if we were going to do it, mm -hmm. we had to do it right, which meant, you know, we're not going to buy frozen paneer from Costco right. or uh, frozen chicken tikka from Sam's Club. We would have to have recipes mm -hmm. uh, that were authentic and we made. Um, so that had a whole level of research and testing that mm -hmm. took weeks. Right. And, and even still ongoing, because sure. you always have things to do. Uh, but then also looking at historical um, businesses that have done well mm -hmm. uh, in Hawaii as well as in the West Coast in Los Angeles, uh, Portland, and different cities that have similar, not the same, but similar mm -hmm. aspects of what we were looking at doing and see, okay, what? was different from the successful ones versus the ones that kind of fell out after two, three years. Right. And so that kind of gave us so you did something some to kind of, yeah, oh, okay. something to kind of lean against as, okay, this works, why did it work? And then right. using those principles. Oh, wonderful. Um, so, so where do you see your business in five years? I mean, where do you see, I mean, what do you grow your business or do you maintain this business or do you hand this business off to you know your employees? Because I know that you work crazy hours right now. You know, six almost you know twenty four hours right running around. Um, on the I mean, think can you keep this up? Some, I don't think I could keep these hours up, but right. I'm a little type A. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I definitely like things done my way. Right. And my motto is: if you want something done right, just do it yourself right. because <laughs> no one does it right. right. So um, I think I would 
I mean, I think we would both always want like a hands-on approach. Mm -hmm. um, but you only have so many hands. Yeah, so, <laughs> so just maybe not 72 hours a week, right. maybe like, you know, 45 or 50. Okay. Um, is, so. is that something that you plan to do? Are you planning to, I know that it is a family-run business right now. It's just you two and your brother. Do mm -hmm. you have employees or are you thinking about start, um, getting employees? We are thinking about hiring a couple part-time okay. um, workers just to help us during like busy hours. Okay. Um, so maybe offering a couple, you know, four to five hour shifts. Oh, nice. Okay. Here and there. That way we could alleviate some of the pressure. Mm -hmm. um, so that's our plan. Um, in terms of expansion, I know he's talking about like a, maybe a, I don't know, maybe branching out to like a mobile truck or right. a van or something so we could reach other parts of the community, mm -hmm. um, generate some more sales like that. Okay. Um, I know like a, a restaurant. It's like what you got, the Mecca or the, the Holy Grail? The amazing goal. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah. I'm not jumping ahead too Okay. Fast. All right. Very good. But uh, definitely want to maintain the business, maybe kind of uh, slow down in terms of your hours mm -hmm. uh, dedicated to the business. Yeah. Yes, but I would like to maintain to be the one doing the cooking. I'm not quite there at yeah. handing that off to anybody. Oh, that's good. But. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, all the great places that I've ever been to, always the owner has a hand, like you say, and right. the, you know, it keeps the quality in check as well as you know, keep that kind of vibrancy of the menu or the restaurant or this right. in this case a food truck. Uh, so we're about to wrap up, but uh, maybe you can just tell the audience uh, where you guys are located, uh, the name of the business, and how they can follow you. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, we're spicy Indian chick. Uh, we have a food truck up in Hali Eva, which is. We're actually on Google Maps, so you can search us, but I believe the address is 66-239 uh, Kamehameha. Um, it's right right past the uh, North Shore Marketplace, if you're coming in on your left. Mm -hmm. Yes. And um, we're right next to Snoopy's Surf Shop. There's uh, the Poke Number no. 7 truck and the Taibo truck right okay. across from us. So it's kind of a fun little spot because right. people have options and they're walking around. And, um, you can find us on Instagram at Spicy Indian Chick, and same for Facebook. And we just got a business phone number. I don't know what it is. <laughs> it's 808-215-9222. Uh, okay. There you have it, folks. Uh, Spicy Indian Chick. Thank you, Danny and Sarah, for coming and joining us today Thank at you. Adventures in Small Business. You guys have a good day now.